this is Kay. Let's do a little crafting for the kitchen. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these canvas paint tarps. I think I got mine at Walmart, but it's an easy, inexpensive fabric to craft with. I'm going to be using some inexpensive acrylic paint in red, a medium yellow, and a light yellow, a white, and a black. I'm going to be using some of my grocery bags to stuff my project with. You could also use some kind of polyfill. You'll need some ribbon to make a bow. I'm going to be using some yellow, red, and black, and also this printed one that has chickens on it. And to further make it more interesting, they should be of different widths. Mine are wired. And finally, some hot glue and some covered floral wire. So I found this simple drawing of a chicken and I traced it out onto some paper. And then I went in with my printer and we blew it up to poster board size. I, some computer programs allow you to do that and it makes it really easy to make a pattern. But the poster board size was a bit big. So what I did was print it at 75% of the original size and that was the perfect size for my back door. This is just a little montage, if you will, showing you how I put it together using some tape and assembling all of the pieces. It's a little confusing sometimes, but what you do is you just find the ones that are obvious and then you kind of work your way out from there. And then of course, I'm just going to go off camera and cut this entire thing out and then we have our pattern. Now, if you've been following for any length of time, I have done the stuffed door hangers different ways. This is a new way. I'm going to take only one side of the fabric and I'm going to go in, first of all, and I pin mine down. Yes, it's an extra step, but I'm only pinning it to one side. I'm not going to cut this chicken out twice like you have seen me do in the past, cutting the back and the front. And that's because once you start painting it, it shrinks. So we're going to do it just a little bit differently. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to iron your fabric before you start because it can get terribly wrinkled in the package or in your storage situation. And then once we do that, we have it pinned, we're going to cut everything out, and this is what it looks like once I have cut it out with my fabric scissors. Now, I'm going to take out the pins, but I'm going to do something different. I'm going to take that fabric and place it on top of the pattern and repin it. This will all make perfect sense in just a moment. Then we have to get all of the details on the chicken before we can paint it. So I brought over my light table. I got this a couple of years ago from the company to do a video for them. Haven't used it in a while, but I thought, wonder if you can see that paper through to the fabric and guess what you can and so i went in with my permanent marker a fine point and i'm going to trace out all the details i'm going to be painting i was so excited that this actually worked y'all the next thing you want to do is seal the edges with your black acrylic paint you just work your way around on the outside with a tiny brush and that will keep things from shrinking further and also those frayed ends from fraying further then I go in with my yellow paint, first of all, and work on the beak and the feet. And later on, I decided, well, that part was a little too yellow, so I will come in and add some orange later. And now I'll just show you a very sped up version of how I painted in all of the yellow for this piece. Once I finish each color, I'm done and I move on to the next. I decided the white would be a little too stark on this piece, so I'm going in actually with antique parchment, and I'm going to paint the wing and the chicken's head with that. The next color I will be using is the red, and this is a bright, cheery color. I will also do his body, but I will do that one off camera. This is the part where I went in with some orange, again, just some acrylic paint, and I'm going to add some to the beak and the feet. Now for all those areas on the chicken that were highlighted areas, I'm going to go in with that light yellow and I'm just going to paint all of them in. I did allow for those items not to be covered with the darker colors as I was working on the chicken. And now that all of the paint is dry, I'm going to go in with my black permanent marker and do just a little bit more highlighting to make it look more like the drawing. Remember how I didn't cut out this chicken twice? Well, now I'm going to go in with my precision tip hot glue gun and I'm going to start gluing him down to just another piece of this fabric. Really easy, simple. 
But don't forget to leave this area right here at the top open so that you can stuff your chicken later. The precision tip glue gun lays down a really thin layer of glue, but if you make a mistake, just make it on your backside so that you will later cut that off. So really simple. And also there at the feet, if you want to, you can just go straight across on the body of the chicken because you're not going to stuff his feet. And now we just need to cut him out. I just do a rough cut and then I'll go off camera and cut it right next to his body. But you do want to make sure that you don't cut that area at the top. You can see I left a little margin so that I have some room in case it expands a lot. And then of course the next step is to stuff the chicken. You can make it as fluffy as you want to or you can keep it pretty flat. But you just want to add enough that it gives him a little bit of fluff. And who likes a skinny chicken anyway? And once he's stuffed, of course, we're going to go in with our precision tip glue gun again, and we'll seal up that hole. And then, of course, trim out that excess. And with that, he's pretty much assembled. The next thing we need to do is add a hanger. I'm going to be using this covered floral wire. I just sort of bend mine in half. That worked out pretty well. Turn him over onto the back, and I just thread the wire through the fabric and twist it several times in his head and for his tail there. And then I'll also seal that off with a little hot glue. And of course he needs a bow accent. So I'm going to go in and cut six inch pieces of ribbon, maybe eight inches, whatever you would like. And I just use all the colors I showed you earlier. I'm also going to be using a bit of twine to assemble the bow. So I cut off a piece of that. And then I take my wider ones, I fold them in half and scrunch them in the middle and then tie them off with some string. Kind of like making two bow ties and pushing them together. For the yellow, I did the exact same thing. I made two bow ties and pushed them together and placed them onto our ribbon and tied it off with the string. I am doing mine individually. It makes your bow stand out and a little fluffier. And here's our last one. We'll place that on top, wrap that jute around several times and tie it onto the back at that point. And I'm going in and I'm also going to trim up that bow. Every bow needs a lot of fluffing and trimming, but for this, I'm going to cut some on an angle. You want the ones at the back to be longer than the ones at the front. You just want to be able to see all of those colors that you've combined together. And you can place your bow down on the top of the chicken there at the point, or you can place it here at the top. There are several different ways you could do it. I tied mine on with that string. I also applied hot glue to keep it in place. And with that, my chicken is complete. I can hardly wait to see him hanging on my back kitchen door. friends, thanks for stopping by. Don't miss our latest videos every Wednesday and Sunday at 7 p.m. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these 10 inch wooden bead wreaths that I got from the Dollar Tree. This wooden word that says hello also came from the Dollar Tree. Some acrylic paint in a bright yellow, a bright red, and also black. Some ribbons, this two inch that looks like chicken wire in red that I got from Amazon. A black and white check that is one inch from Hobby Lobby. And then the yellow is from craftoutlet.com. And then I'm going to use this two and a half inch ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby that is chicken wire. This figurine rooster that's about two and a half inches tall. And finally, some floral wire, my wire cutters, and some hot glue. So the first thing you want to do is take your pliers and open up those ends on that wood wreath and take off all of the wooden beads. Then I'm just going to take two Ziploc bags and I'm going to put half of the beads into each bag. Then I'll simply take my acrylic paint and pour some into the baggie and then massage the beads until all of them are covered. Once they are covered, I pour them into a pan lined with some parchment paper or wax paper, and then I just separate them with a stick so that they can dry. And then I'm coming in with the yellow beads doing the exact same way. This is the easiest way I know to paint beads with acrylic paint when you have a lot of them to do. 
And for the word hello, I'm simply going to paint it with acrylic paint in black. It didn't take but one coat. On the edges, you can paint those. I did. I went in all the nooks and crannies, but you really don't have to because this has been laser cut. Now our beads are dry, so I'm simply going to string them back onto the wire. I'm doing just a red and yellow pattern. You could also do two red and two yellow, whatever suits your personal taste. And now we'll just close that up with our pliers. And I always end up leaving out one bead. I never can get them perfectly back on there, but this is what it looks like so far. So I'm going to take my little chicken figurine and I'm going to take some floral wire and attach it right down onto the O. I just sort of work the wire underneath his neck feathers and it's hardly noticeable at all. And I'll just twist that in the back with my pliers. I used my wire cutters and I cut two pieces of this chicken wire ribbon at 12 inches each. And then I'm going to come in with some more floral wire, cut off pieces. I take the two pieces of chicken wire ribbon, place them one on top of the other, and I just sort of tack it, if you will, just twist it around in several places to make the piece of wire a wider ribbon. And then I'm going to take more pieces of floral wire and I'm going to wire the doubled ribbon to the wood bead wreath. I'm going to go in in between where the beads are so you don't even notice it and I just twist it towards the back. Once I get it on there the way I want it, I will turn it over and then I'm going to trim up with my wire cutters the edges of that ribbon to mold to the shape of the wreath and then I'll put some glue on top to secure it as well. I'm going to be placing the word hello centered onto the chicken wire ribbon and again I'm just using floral wire. I'll twist it around the middle of the H and part of the O and hide it in the back, cut off the excess, add a little glue to secure it and I did put mine on upside down y'all but off camera I went back and I changed it. I'm going to use my Easy Bow Maker to make a bow. I'm going to do eight inch tails and three inch loops on each side coming in first of all with the yellow. Then the second ribbon I'm going to use is this black and white. It's about an inch wide. I found I didn't have a whole lot of it, so I just folded it in half and used what I had and it was exactly enough. Again, I used the same measurements as before, for the third ribbon, I'm going to do the tails just a little bit shorter than the ones below and the loops just a little bit smaller as well. And then I'll do an extra loop right there in the center. I'm going to take it out of my Easy Bow Maker, place in a zip tie, turn it on the back, and I start tightening it. But before I do, I'm going to place a chenille stem inside and then cinch everything down tightly. We'll cut off that excess, give our bow a really good fluffing, come in and dovetail those ends. I did adjust some of the lengths so that, so that you could see all of the colors. And now we have everything ready to assemble the wreath. All we have left is to attach the bow at the bottom using the chenille stem twisted in the back, cut off the excess. And with that, this project is complete. love for you to take a moment and let us know what you think because your comments fuel our creativity. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using an 11 by 14 frame that I got at the thrift store. It was half price day, so it only costs 75 cents and it's nice solid wood. I'm going to be using some chicken wire. Just make sure it's a little larger than your frame. Some red and white chalk paint by Folgard. I have this two and a half inch wired ribbon. It came from craftoutlet.com and also this one and a half inch yellow ribbon. And I believe that came from Hobby Lobby. A metal rooster that I purchased at Hobby Lobby. One wooden clothespin and some chenille stems. My easy bow maker. Some wire cutters and some sandpaper and my heavy duty stapler. And of course some hot glue and some one gallon paint stirrer sticks. The first thing I'm going to do is remove this backing from the frame. I'm going to take out the glass and discard it. I'm also going to take out these glazing points. I just use my wire cutters. Probably pliers would be better, but hey, sometimes you just grab what you got on hand. 
The next thing I'm going to do is give my piece a really good coat of the white chalk paint. I'm going to paint the front edges, the side, anything really that's going to show. I'm using this as just the primer coat. Now that the white paint is dry, I'm going in with the red chalk paint and I'm just going to paint in all the same places. Because we did a base coat first, this red goes on like a dream and it only takes one coat. Once everything is nice and dry, I'm going to start laying out my chicken wire and you need to be careful because this stuff will cut you. It's very sharp, but I'm using a heavy duty stapler and I'm going to stretch it out as tightly as possible and place on those staples into the wood. And we'll just use our wire cutters and cut off the excess, trying to keep it inside the frame. And when you're cutting with those wire cutters, by the way, if you cut as close to a knot as possible, where those wires meet, it doesn't pull out from the staples. So that really does help. To clean up the back just a little bit more, I'm going in with some one gallon paint stirrer sticks and I'm just going to use some hot glue to attach them to the back of the frame and that will cover up any edges that are sticking out from the chicken wire and it will keep our memo board from scratching your door or wall where you're going to be hanging it. To attach the metal rooster to the piece, I have a cable tie that's right here at the top and I'm going to fasten in a chenille stem and the rooster has an opening here on this metal piece that is supporting the leg and I'll also twist in a chenille stem there. Then I'm taking it down to the frame. I'm going to find a good cross bar, if you will, on the chicken wire, pull it to the back, twist it around and once it's secure, I'm also going to use a little hot glue on top of the chenille stems just to further make sure it doesn't move around. I'm going to be using my Easy Bow Maker to make a bow. I did seven inch tails and four inch loops. I'm going to put two loops on each side. Make sure you twist that ribbon as you bring it down between the pegs. And then we'll cut off the edge at seven. Now for the yellow ribbon, I'm going in and I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to make my tails just a little bit shorter and my loops just a little bit smaller than the one below. Then we'll take it out of the Easy Bow Maker and use a chenille stem to twist it right around the middle, pull it tight, we'll turn it to the back, give it a good fluffing, and with that, the bow is complete. But don't forget to trim up those ends and dovetail them. To secure it to the frame, I'm just going to bring it down right in that corner where the chicken wire meets the frame in the upper right hand corner, twist it on the back, add a little glue to secure it, and cut off the excess. I'm going to be using this for my shopping list, so I'm just going to take that clothespin and attach it to the outside of the frame, and then we'll hang on the list. To hang the frame, I'm going to be using two eye hooks in the top of the frame, and then I'm simply going to take some jute twine and tie on a piece that will hang from a hook on my door. And with that, this project is complete. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye, y'all.